Oh, absolutely. And uh, like I said, one of the things I do like to do is take like one piece of equipment, be it a bench or a dumbbell or anything pretty much and create an entire workout based on that. A um, bench, like a bench by itself? Just like a are single you, bench. Are you lifting the bench too as well? Sometimes as- <laughs> I do. Yeah, like literally sometimes I will just take a bench and I will use that as the resistance. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's like really, you know, just kind of thinking things, thinking of things differently. Right. One of the things I like to do when I go to um, commercial gyms, like regular gyms, um, I don't have a limited selection of equipment at my own place. But when I go to these gyms, I look at all the machines and the equipment and I think, okay, that's for that. What else can I do with that? Right. You know, I used to actually uh, work on cruise ships quite a lot. And um, some of the gyms on there are very limited. Yeah. Uh, one of the gyms I had basically was like when I, a universal weight stack with a bench press attachment. And uh, I came up with you know, a variety of total body workouts that could be done just with that single bench press machine. I could do legs, shoulders, hamstrings, curls, you name it. Everything could be are done. Are you like lying on your back, like leg pressing the, the things? And, and I'm, yeah. I'm visualizing doing like thrusters with it and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like literally, people would walk in and be like, you know, "Yeah, their jaws, <laughs> their jaws are on the floor." That's not what that machine is for, sir. <laughs> I've actually gotten kicked out of gyms before. Oh man, I can so, imagine doing the crazy stuff. But you also do like a lot of odd object stuff as well, don't you? I do, yeah, and uh, that stuff's a lot of fun. Um, that's a lot of the stuff that I do actually outside my driveway and walking up and down the street. Is uh, one of my favorite things is uh, getting a couple of water jugs, you know, seven gallon water jugs, sixty pounds each. Um, what I've done sometimes is actually take one of these water jugs and I'll just do a two mile walk without letting that water jug ever touch the ground. So I'll like put it on a shoulder, I'll switch to the other shoulder, I'll do a farmer's carry in one hand, I'll hold it out in front. Um, just a variety of things, just never letting that touch the ground. And, uh, you know, that's that's the most fun cardio I, I do is stuff like that. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a 70 pound sandbag over my shoulders and go for a run. Um, I'll do, I actually have a 140 pound sandbag that I go for a walk with sometimes. Oh goodness. That sounds terrible. That just sounds atrocious, man. Well, but oh, like, yeah. see, this kind of stuff is what builds, you know, what a lot of people might refer to as kind of like farm boy strength. You know what I mean? That strength that you, like you can build a great looking body by doing some general exercises like we just talked about before, but mm-hmm. to build that body that's just a freak that like, you know, you, you know, you can always open the jar when it's stuck. And you can always, you know, pull the root out when it's stuck in the ground or you can drive stuff with a hand. You can't really do that in the, in a, in a traditional gym setting, I should say. But, but just like you said, like grabbing a jug of water and going for a walk, it's, it's exact. I mean, I'll I'll tell you a story from a while back. I was trying to motivate my dad to lose weight because he was, he was about 280 pounds at the time. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I signed us up for a 10 K race, not to run it. I had no intentions of us running. I wanted to walk it together. And I told him we will walk this race at the same weight. So whatever weight you're at, I'm going to walk it at. So I took my weight vest and I slapped 80 pounds in it and Mm -hmm. we did a 10K race together. And I will admit that was one of the most exhausting things I've ever done. And if my dad felt the same way that I did at the end of that race, then I have a lot more sympathy for people who have a significant amount of weight to lose. And, And that was just powerful. And the worst part about that, Nick, was getting to the finish line, I still had a mile to go before I could take that damn vest off. So everybody else is celebrating and I'm sitting there with my shoulders and my neck and and you know, how that feels right everything is just burning on fire oh man that's crazy yeah I, i've actually done something similar to that where i basically decided to see what it felt like to be somebody who is massively overweight and feel what it takes to move around like that sure. so i basically took every piece of resistance that i could pile onto myself in the gym and started doing step ups with it right. um, i had the 85 pound weight vest i had two 20 pound ankle weights I had, uh, you know, 50, 60 pounds of chains on me. And um, I also grabbed a couple 125 pound dumbbells. So I had uh, more than 400 extra pounds on me. <laughs> and I was doing step ups with this. And man, you know, it really opens your eyes as to how hard it is to carry that weight around. Yeah. And uh, it also kind of lets you know when people who are that size really start to, you know, focus on their diet and exercise they're carrying so much muscle mass just from carrying that extra fat mass. That's why they just, you know, they lose fat like crazy right away when they're, when they get that uh, proper setup going Sure. because all that muscle mass is, you know, just for supporting that much weight is working, burn all those calories. So, you know, if you're not weighing that much and you want to kind of feel how that feels, throw on a weight vest, you know, carry something heavy 
and walk around with it and you'll get a lot more sympathy for people who are carrying a lot of extra because it's a whole different ball game. It is a whole different. I'm so happy you mentioned that too, the muscle mass thing. That's really interesting because I knew a guy back in the day, Mike, and Mike went on this huge diet and exercise kick and he lost like, I don't know, it was like 150, almost 200 pounds. Like he went from like four to 200. And the yeah. guy had the best damn set of calves I've ever seen in my life, right? Because imagine walking around all day with an extra 200 pounds on your shoulders. And you know, the, what's taking the brunt of that force? It's your lower body, your legs, your calves and stuff. And so you're right. It's really interesting that, you know, if somebody's really overweight listening to this, right now you might have a little bit of a blessing underneath it all as provided we can get your diet dialed and you know get you burning that fat someday you'll probably have way better calves than i ever will because uh, because of it have you ever seen the book uh, fit to fat to fit nick have you ever seen that I've not seen it. But I've heard the name before. Yeah. You should Google it, man. It was this personal trainer who was this really shredded, ripped guy at the gym and stuff like that. And he was always wondering, like, why can't I motivate these fat people to, like, you know, get off their butt and everything? He was said he was really superficial and egotistical until one day he decided that he was going to just, you know, I'm going to stop working out. I'm going to eat like crap and I'm going to intentionally gain, you know, 60, 80 pounds. I can't remember how much he gained, somewhere around that neighborhood. And so he gained all that weight and he said, like, it was the most in challenging thing ever was like this emotional thing. Like he was just so exhausted and tired and depressed. And his wife was like, what are you doing to yourself? You used to be this like, you know, this Adonis and now you're just this depressed fat guy. And then he lost it all again. So there's some really good pictures and stuff, but that's yeah. interesting. Those, the, the psychological consequences of gaining, gaining tons of weight and losing it as well. Oh, absolutely. And in a lot of ways it becomes like body armor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, one of the things I was thinking about today is too is, uh, you know, fat being body armor is more of a defensive kind of thing, sure. whereas muscle as body armor is more like an offensive, offensive kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, not offensive, but being you know, the yeah. best defense is a good offense. You know, it's, strength is more, you know, projection than it is defense. Yeah, no, that's a really interesting thing, man. That's we're getting into some kind of deep, uh, deep conversations <laughs> here, like the psychology of weight and stuff. Um, let's get back to what we were talking about a second. Cause I was, I really want to emphasize odd objects. I don't have a lot of guys that come on this podcast or girls for that matter that talk about odd object training. Mm -hmm. And, um, I want to maybe just kind of, what do you think in your mind are the benefits and maybe what's the best way for people to get started with this stuff? Because I mean, I've been doing odd object training for like 10 years and it's shocking how for like, you know, less than 20 bucks, you can rig yourself up with some great odd objects and you could build some really, like we said, real world farmer strength that yeah. you can apply. So go ahead. Yeah. Shoot on that. I love that. Uh, the way that you refer to it as farmer strength, because that's exactly what it is. And, um, you know, you can do it in a variety of very, very simple, very inexpensive ways. Like for example, those water jugs, mm -hmm. they're like eight bucks at a, a hardware store or at an outdoor sporting goods store. Right. You know, really they're just plastic jugs and they shift around, they slosh around. You can get bags of sand right. uh, very cheaply. You can get, I, I lift bags of dog food sometimes. <laughs> I got three dogs and I get like 35 pound, 40 pound bags of dog food right. obviously over my shoulders and carrying them around out in front like a bear hug. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes what I'll do is um, I'll do multiple objects at once. Like I'll carry the water jug on a shoulder and I'll carry a sandbag in one, in one sure, hand. Sure, sure. You know, so this is sloshing, the sandbag is shifting around. You know, you can combine things like that. Um, one of the things I also like to do is uh, like sledgehammer training. Right. You know, you can get tires very cheaply from, you know, tire stores because they're happy to get rid of them because they have to pay to recycle those. You just show up and say, I want your old tires. They'll say, how many do you want? Right. You, know, you can buy a sledgehammer at a hardware store for, you know, 15, 20 bucks. And there's your sledgehammer training. Yeah. So one of my favorite things actually, and you know, this is not always for everybody, but um is pushing cars. Ah, uh, I've done some car pushing in my day too. It's so much fun. It's uh, <laughs> I, I get my wife to sit in front and I'll push it up the street. I'll, I'll basically do like a universal soldier thing like with Van Damme did when he's like pushing it 35 <laughs> miles an hour. You know, I will literally do car pushing sprints up and down the street, getting this thing going as fast as I can. Oh man. The, um, the lactic acid you develop with that is just unbelievable. You have never felt yeah. anything like that when you get um, it going. I agree, man. I can't, I can't agree more on that one. Me and uh, my good friend, Logan Christopher, I think that you guys know each other as well. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's, he and I got into some crazy car stuff for a while. I used to have longer hair, so we were like towing the car with the hair. He still got longer hair. He's, he was doing that stuff. But like just the first time I remember pushing my minivan, you know, about, I don't know, it was about 100, uh, probably 
probably 70 yards or something like that. Oh, my God. I remember just getting done, falling to the ground, like you said, like, like your calves, your legs, your upper body, your torso, and, you're, <gasps> and you can't. Oh, you're stuck it's, yeah. it's, it's exhausting. It's, but yeah. it's really fun. I enjoy doing that a lot. I need to do more more stuff like that. Oh, yeah. The, the best part is uh, my neighbors, actually, their kids just love watching me do that stuff. Like, <laughs> they're, like, literally at the window watching me do this stuff. And uh, so one day I told them, why don't you all pile in the minivan? And uh, the neighbors had a minivan. And I pushed them up and down the street. <laughs> and the kids just loved it. They're like, when can we do it again? You know, oh, that's, that's so hilarious. Cool. Yeah. That's good, man. That's good when you have kids around. Like you can you can show them that good example. You know, like I have a, a baby girl right now. And I keep thinking about all the things that I can do to show her a good example. Because I love my parents to death. But I didn't really get the best uh, physical or, or nutritional examples from them. And I want to make sure that my daughter gets that. You know, like just the other day we went out to the gym and me and my my friend was staying with us and we we sat her down on the mats that I have and I would do you know like a set of rope climbs and then I'd come back over and he would do a set of rope climbs and she's watching us work out and lift weights and stuff and it was so enjoyable and I just know that really helps pattern children's brains to be more physically active and stuff